guys welcome back to my channel and if you're new welcome on my channel we do mostly acting content so if you're in the acting space this is the perfect place for you it's like a little community where we all help each other so I've been wanting to do a self tape video for a while because even if you're new to the industry you don't have an agent or anything like that you can still be getting self tape auditions pretty much everything is self tape now and I wanted to give you guys my tools that I use in case you are getting yourself those self tape auditions so you have the best shot of booking. I'm now posting every Wednesday which I'm super excited about and I'm going to be posting a part two to this video which will be me actually filming the self tape and then the finished product so you definitely want to come back for that. I'm going to take you guys along with me of what I do to prepare for an audition. I can't use a script from a real audition. Most of them are from shows and TV shows that aren't out yet so we're not allowed to release the scripts but my acting coach recently wrote a script for our class and his name's Lee Spencer. He's the absolute best. I adore him and he always writes the most interesting scripts as an actor that you know you rarely get to play a very interesting exciting role but Lee always writes the most exciting roles so this is a perfect one to take you guys along because it's a very nuanced detailed script so I'm going to take you guys along with the steps that I would take as if I received this as an audition and you know you can kind of Take what you think would help you and use it. You don't have to follow all of these steps, but it's what I've learned. And you're also going to be getting the inside scoop of like what my acting coach said when we were practicing this. So it's kind of like two for the price of one. I think it'll be really helpful to like see the exercises that I use that I found really, really helped me. Especially if you're completely new, you maybe haven't even been trained yet and you just got an audition and you have no idea how to start. So first things first, um, <laughs> this is obvious, but just read through the script. You know, see what character you're assigned and then read through the script. Just read it through as if you're just, you know, an audience member. Usually they'll give you a brief character description. So the character breakdown my acting coach gave for this role was Logan has a secret. There is someone else involved in the murder and Logan knows exactly what happened and why. Create a backstory as to what events led up to this murder. The last time on camera, I want you to add a layer of subtext but cover it well. So basically I'm going to attach right here the script and so you can read along with me and kind of know what I'm talking about. So you can pause it and go ahead and read. Um, basically the script is your grandmother was just shot and you're being questioned by the police and there's a lot more there than meets the eye. Now if this is a script you know for an audition you'd probably know a little more. My acting coach left it open-ended so we could create our own backstory that would kind of like shape the way we did it so all of us do it differently but we'll get to there that's kind of jumping ahead. So you can go ahead and pause and read this to kind of get an idea and then what you want to do is you want to go through and find the the givens this is something that all new actors should do and then even seasoned actors that have been doing this forever do the same thing but they kind of do it without having to think about it it just happens naturally when you read the script but you want to go through and find the givens you know you want to learn everything you can about this character because when you get an audition you don't get the full script so I'd go through and I'd read what are my givens and there's a part where Harris reads a long part basically telling you a lot about your character you live here with just your grandmother your two parents have passed away you hear the bell ring and you let this man in so you already know there so some givens that you can add are okay my parents passed away I live with just my grandmother a man in a raincoat came to the door you want to go through and find any clues they give you about your character that are 100% certain that aren't up for discussion and then I would start memorizing I memorize scripts actually very, very, very easily, so I don't really use a technique, but there is one I learned in class that works really well for my sister who doesn't memorize as easily, and I did a video on that. I'll leave it linked down below. It You memorize the script in like a minute. It's really quick. I When you're doing it, it feels like no work, so you really feel like you're not memorizing it, but then I swear when you put your script down, you're going to have it memorized. It's crazy, um, but I'll leave that link down below, so if you want to learn more about memorization or that's something you struggle with, with. there's a technique that really really helps but for me I just memorize easily so this is kind of the part where you would memorize the script and then you want to create your backstory so basically the backstory that my whole class decided to come up with was we had our boyfriend kill our grandmother and that's why there's more to our character than meets the eye so that kind of changes everything and that's why at the end of the script where it says Logan slowly looks up after Detective Harris it's difficult to tell from Logan's expression just what they're thinking so 
now we have a strong backstory and idea of our character and what happened so that we're not just like oh let me think of something mysterious like you know what it is but the audience isn't going to know and it's going to make your performance so captivating and interesting if you have such a specific story already made i think that's the backstory that fits the best with the script usually if you were given this as an audition they would tell you if you killed your grandma or not you know they wouldn't leave that big secret but let's just say they told us okay you killed your grandma, you had your boyfriend kill your grandma. You're gonna kind of fill in the blanks. How long have you been dating your boyfriend? You know, what's your boyfriend's name? How much do you love your boyfriend? Are you scared of your boyfriend? Do you love your boyfriend? You know, you wanna just fill in those for yourself and use the givens that you've been given to build a backstory around those givens because you don't want to make a backstory that's going to contradict something in the script that's why the givens are so important so use the givens to build a backstory around that that doesn't contradict the script but uses the script and keeps the script in mind there is something else um some people like to journal as if they're the character you can journal five days before five hours before and then five minutes before this event in a script like this it's a really good thing because if you get a scene for an audition and it's like a big event that happens it can be helpful to journal five days before like what led up to this five hours before and then five minutes before just so you kind of know what led your character to this and what headspace your character's in right when this scene starts another thing that i really like to do is i like to research the director and the casting director that i'm auditioning for usually on your breakdown it'll tell you who the director or the casting director is or you can look the project up on IMDb. Once you have the director and the casting director's name, you can look them up on IMDb and see what other projects they've done. Usually it'll be projects that you've seen before, at least one or two. And you can kind of get an idea of the acting style they like. Because if you were auditioning for something like Ginny and Georgia, it's going to be different than Euphoria. If you know what I mean? Like Ginny and Georgia is more comedic, Disney. Euphoria is more real, nuanced. It's kind of good to know who you're auditioning for. And then you want to read through the script again and find nuanced moments. The thing that's going to make your audition the strongest is find when your emotions as your character change. So some moments that really stood out to me in this script and my whole class are you'll see later on when I show you the finished self tape. So right in the beginning, your character's bawling, so sad, really trying to sell this. And then something switches, I think, when I read this. Okay, it's okay. Let me just make sure I got everything and we'll get you somewhere safe for tonight, okay? You know, in most situations, the character would be like, oh, thank goodness, I don't want to be here. My grandmother was just murdered. But Logan nods okay with their head down and then looks up quick. I have somewhere to stay. Like, you remembered something. You know, maybe you're going to meet your boyfriend. You know, have a reason why your character is like, da -da -da, I, I have somewhere to stay. You have somewhere to be that night. So you don't want to be there. So that's a good moment to show a change in your character. And then I think another place, this is more up, Nana said that's him and I opened the door. You're kind of blaming yourself. Like you opened the door that got your grandmother killed. So, you know, show the emotion in the flashback of like you opened the door and that's the reason your grandmother's dead. And then this is obviously very important when your character says, he was here maybe five minutes, they started shouting and then I heard the first shot. And the detective's like, the first shot? And you realize you kind of messed up your story. You're the, the shot. What? I meant the shot. Listen. And then you're covering for yourself. I was frightened. I thought maybe he was going to come after me. So that's an important moment to show maybe your mask drops for a minute. And you get kind of defensive. And then it says, Logan looks down and gently weeps. Something seems to slightly trigger Harris. Harris starts to say something but only gets out. Okay. So as the character, you need to realize that Harris is supposed to have a moment there where he almost wants to comfort you. So you as an actor and being a good scene partner need to give him something to react off of. So that moment there, Logan looks down and gently weeps. You need to make sure it happens right after he says, let's get Officer Prez over here. So then you have your moment where you're, oh, you know, you're crying. And then that can trigger Harris to have that moment. So it's just reading the script and really thinking where are the emotional differences in this script where can i put the nuance where can i show my backstory in this script because you don't want to say every line the same you don't want to just be crying the whole time you want to have levels that's what makes it interesting especially in an audition because this is all they're going to see from you so finding those emotional moments are i think the most important thing so once you've memorized it and you've kind of found your emotional moments i think it's time to start warming up to film the audition now this totally depends on the person if you're someone that struggles with pronunciation maybe you do um, tongue twisters we do grip top sock in our acting class 
or if you're someone that holds a lot of tension in your mouth maybe you relax your mouth you massage your mouth maybe you stretch maybe you need to do like some meditation to kind of get yourself in the headspace where you're ready to film an audition um, because you kind of have to be completely zeroed in another thing that I find really helpful and that my class does for an emotional scene like this which is so silly and I'm gonna look so stupid um, but we do a thing called cry laugh anxiety scream and basically for this exercise the more dramatic and crazy you do this the better it's something we do to get us so out of our body and just to do something so crazy that when we go to a script like this where we're bawling and we're super upset we've already done so many crazy emotions that that's simpler for us it kind of gets you out of your head gets you out of your body and like the cry laugh anxiety scream puts you in the emotional state you need to reach this your breathing when you're crying and you're laughing is very similar so it kind of helps you get to that level and you feel so silly that you your body doesn't know the difference when you're fake cry laughing and screaming your body can't really tell the difference so it's a good way of getting yourself to an extremely emotional vulnerable state quickly so how we do it is like the more dramatic the better so you start by crying you're like <laughs> you know like super dramatic and then you go <laughs> like see how that kind of transition so you're <laughs> anxiety and then you end it with ah! like scream as hard as loud as you can and it feels really silly but if you're alone obviously you know you just let yourself go or if you're in a group you kind of all like amp each other up more and more but it's all about connecting the breath so you're crying <laughs> like I feel so stupid doing that because if you've not been in an acting class or you haven't like done this type of stuff you're gonna think I'm crazy but I swear to you it helps. Um, Cause I'm not all about that like warm ups and like craziness. I'm kind of just like get up and act, but that is something that I swear helps. And then we're gonna talk about hair, makeup, outfits. For wardrobe, I like to pick something that like flatters my eye color or hair, whatever. You wanna go with something that kind of fits the character. You don't wanna wear something that completely, you know, is the opposite of the character, but you also don't wanna like wear a doctor coat or something or a fireman's outfit like you just want to wear something that could kind of allude to the character and you want to wear usually a plain colored shirt something that flatters you looks good on you and will match your background it's pretty simple i'll show you guys what i end up wearing i'm doing a part two which will be me actually filming the self tape and the finished product so definitely come back for that in part two you'll see kind of what outfit i end up wearing as for hair and makeup it kind of depends on the age they give you for the character if i'm auditioning for younger i will definitely wear less makeup i will sometimes even wear like brown mascara and a very light lip and i'll try to wear like maybe a light blue which makes me look younger it really just depends all that being said you kind of just want to do minimal makeup and you want to dress to kind of allude to the character but like a plain shirt something that matches the background and looks good on you but i think that's pretty much it I hope that was helpful. As always, any questions that you have or anything I can help you with, please leave a comment or DM me on Instagram and I will try my best to answer. I usually reply to every comment I get on my videos, but I really appreciate your support. Don't forget to come back next Wednesday for part two because I will be releasing the finished product of this and showing how I actually filmed it. But I love and appreciate all of you and I'm proud of every single one of you for putting in the work to make your dreams come true and, you know, doing the research and... It's not an easy industry, but I believe in every single one of you, and I can't wait to see all of you on TV. I'll see you guys next Wednesday.